Okay, good morning, grade eights. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. And I'm just about to make your lives even better. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at gears and specifically tooth and velocity ratios. But before we start, how are you guys doing today? How's your day going so far? Good, thanks, sir. Is it? Are you guys ready to learn something cool and interesting? Yes, sir. Okay, great. So let's start off. Okay, so what we're going to be looking at today is we're going to be looking at how gears have an impact in our lives and how we can use them to adapt. Okay, so we're going to look at this thing over here quickly at the bottom here. Okay, so we can see this is a bicycle driving a sprocket at the back with a chain. Okay, great. And we can see over here we've got our driven, we've got our driver, pedal gear, and sprocket. But what I want you to do, we're going to watch a video, and I want you guys to just pay attention to the video and try think of as many different mechanical components as you can. Hello, I'm Maddie, and today I've come to the park to ride my bike. Have you learned how to ride a bike? Now, they say, once you've learned, you never forget. But, do you know how a bike works? Let's find out. How does it work? A bike. When I ride my bike, I put my hands on the handlebars like this, and I put my feet on the pedals. And you can see that as I push the pedals, the wheels go round too, and this is what makes the bike move. But how do the pedals make the wheels go round? Well, that's thanks to something called the chain. The chain is this large metal loop here. It's made of lots of smaller pieces of metal that are fixed together called links. The chain goes around this large metal cog which is attached to the pedals and you can follow it back to the smaller metal cog which is attached to the wheel. But to see how the chain makes the bike move, we need to take a closer look. When you push the pedals with your feet, they turn the big cog in the middle of the bike round and round. The big cog has teeth all about the edge. Okay, great. So we went in, what did what was she trying to show us with the whole video? What was the main things that you guys could see? So we could see the gears, the chain. Okay, so what about the gears? She was trying to tell us exactly how does the gears move. And how they? How they rotate, sir. Okay, great. So from this here, how many different mechanical components could you see in this video? So was there not maybe a gear, a lever, a wheel and a chain. Yeah, so basically that's what you had. Okay, a chain, there's not really a mechanical component in our eyes yet. You'll see why. We're going to go to the main mechanical components. But yes, it does play a mechanical feature in the video. But mainly we saw gears, we saw pulleys, levers and cranks. Okay, so in that day you were spot on. Okay, and but today we're going to be specifically focusing on the gears part. Okay, so we're going to be looking at how gears can affect a lot of things that we do. So for today, by the end of this lesson, you guys will be able to calculate gear velocity ratio based on examples given to you where you can see the amount of teeth for both or multiple gears. And on the right hand side here, we just got a normal spur gear and you can see how it's rotating and how they're all interlinked. So this is how normal gears work without a chain. You can see how it perfectly fits in over here. Every single time it matches up and that's how it's been designed. Right, so let's just go for a quick revision of the gears. We get bevel gears. So what does a bevel gear do? It helps change? It changes the direction from the rotation. It, it, yeah, it changes the direction of the rotation. So you can think of this like a hand roll. I mean that when we turn like a 
those old handles, I don't know how many guys, have any of you guys used one of those old handles before? No, sir. No, okay, so basically what happens is that we all know a drill, we used to make holes in objects. And we use a drill bit that goes and spins around, and it can go and cut into our material. Now, hand draw, how it works, is that if we had to go and just draw it out very quickly, is that if this is the handle that's spinning around that way, Okay, so we're turning this here around. We need to somehow get this downwards. We have to put our draw bits over here. Okay, so I'm going to use this bit over here to turn, and we use a bevel gear over here to go and help change the motion to be able to rotate it downwards. So we make it go from that way down to that way. And that's the main thing of a bevel gear and how bevel gears can help us go and make our lives easier. Okay, we also get spur gears. Spur gears are like... Our normal everyday gears. Yes, yeah, so that, this over here, this is a spur gear, all right? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, we also get rack and pinion gears. They say a motor or a gate. How does it work? What does it do on a motor gate? So doesn't it change the rotation movement to linear movement? Yes, it does. So what it does, is that if I can get this pin saw back up over here, is that if we have a normal spur gear over here and that thing is going and rotating, let's say clockwise, what it does is that we have a rail that goes and also has a whole lot of teeth on this rail. And our gear also has teeth. And what it does, it actually hooks in to these slots over here and it goes and it's gonna pull it to the left hand side. So it can open and close gates. So that's what a main thing of a rack and pinion gear does. And then we also get a worm gear. Can someone try to explain to me what a worm gear looks like? So doesn't it kind of look like a coil? Yeah, like a coil. It's got like a spiral look where it consists of basically one spur gear and it has like a, you could say, uh, how can I say it? It's basically, it's got like a, a shaft that has like you said, a coil around it. What happens at the teeth then go and link up into these grooves and it can go and change its motion as well. Okay, great. So let's quickly revise some of the gears. Okay, so on our gears, we've got our pitch diameter. So that's our inner bit over here. And we've got our outer diameter between the two teeth. Our pitch is from the start or the end of one gear to the other side. So this whole length over here we call our pitch. And then we've got our inside diameter and our outside diameter. Okay. But the main thing out of all this here is that this is something that you guys are going to need to study, just wrap your heads around. It's not something hard, but once you guys know the basics of it, you're going to get this every single time. Another thing is that we have a driver and a driven. What's the difference between driver and driven? So doesn't a driver gear put in the force? Okay. And which the which drives the driven gear. So without the driver gear, like the driven gear wouldn't Won't really work. work. Yeah, nothing will happen. Okay, that's exactly it. And then we've got our teeth. These are what we call our teeth over here. Okay, great. So let's quickly go and look at what is gear velocity ratio? Why is it important? Okay, so gear velocity ratio refers to the ratio between the number of teeth of the driver gear compared to the number of teeth on the driven gear. So we've got two different types. We've got a low gear ratio and we've got a high gear ratio. Low gear ratio gives us more speed but less force, where a high gear ratio is less speed and more force. So to think about this here, imagine you're on a bicycle. You're on a nice downhill, the thing's in its top gear. And your, the way the gears work is that the back gear would be small and your front gear on the bicycle would be big. Okay, this is going to be a low gear ratio because we're going to get a lot more speed from this and we're going to put in a lot less force, meaning that our legs aren't going to be pumping up and down as quickly as we need a lot of slow movements. Whereas for high gear ratio, our driver gear is going to be small and our driven gear is going to be huge. And what that does, it decreases our speed, but we add in more force. 
So what's going to happen is you're going to be pumping your legs up and down very quickly. So it's like for steep uphill. You're going to be moving a lot. You're going to add in a lot more force, but it helps you get up the hill easier because of the ratio of the gears. Okay, so what formula do we use to calculate this here? So velocity ratio is calculated by taking the driver gear and dividing it by the driven gear, putting it over one another. So if you had, say, like six teeth on the driver gear and there was 12 teeth on the driven gear, you put them over, but we don't necessarily divide it. We want to more simplify it. So in this case, we get one over two. Yeah, but I'll explain that now to you guys. Okay, so let's think about this here. We have our driver gear that has 35 teeth on it, and our driven gear has 25 teeth. Using the two gears, calculate the velocity ratio of the gears. Okay, can you guys quickly do this? You have 10 seconds for me. Nine, eight, four, three, yes. So, wouldn't it be 35 divided by 25? Okay, it'll be 35 over 25. That's correct. And then what do you do? You? Simplify it, sir. Okay, great. So let's go through it quickly. So step one, write the formula down for me. I know, you guys, it's an easy thing to remember, but always please write this down. VR is equal to driver over driven. Tell me it every single time because you get marks for this. Why do I throw marks away? Always write it down. Step two, insert our values. I said driver was 35 and our driven was 25. You put them over. And as you said correctly, you go and simplify it. So if we simplify our fraction, we get 7 over 5. And this is now can be written in the ratio of 7 to 5. And this is it. This is our velocity ratio for that gear. Was it that hard? No, sir. Okay, let's do some more examples. Okay, so example number two. Over here, we've got a case with a bicycle. Now, I want to ask you guys a quick question. Does this chain have an impact on velocity ratio? No, sir. Why not? Can you guys think of it why it won't? Mm. Is this changing the speed that these two gears would move at? Is this going and slowing something down? No, no. sir. Remember, a chain is made up of lots of linkages. And all it does is that it hooks on one tooth or a couple of teeth on this side and hooks on a couple of teeth on that side. And all it does, it basically extends it. So they're still connected to one another, like over here. But all it's done is that it allows us to space those gears further apart. Great. So over here, we've got 30 teeth on our what type of gear? Driven. Sir. Okay. And we've got 60 teeth on our? Driver. Okay. So we put... In our formula first, do we go and just chuck everything into our formula or what do we do first? We write out our formula. So yes, and what is that? VR equals driver over driven. Okay, great. Then we go and we substitute in our values, so 60 over 30, and then we simplify the fraction. And over here, we can either say VR is equal to 2, or we can write it in a better way that makes it a little bit easier of saying 2 to 1. So we have a velocity ratio of 2 to 1. Great. So number 3 is going to be exactly the same. Our driver gear has how many teeth? The driver has 80 teeth, sir. Okay, great. And our driven has? 20, sir. Yes. Okay, so write down the formula, substitute in the point, and what is our final answer going to be if it's 80 over 20? 4, sir. Yes, or we can write it as? 4 is to 1. 4 to 1, great. If I was you guys, write it rather down as 4 to 1. Don't just write it as 4, because later on it might confuse you guys. Okay, so what stood out of today's lesson for you? So the difference between the driver and the driven gears. What type of difference? Just how you never really thought that two gears could have different meanings, different names. Yes, sir. Okay, next question. Next one, what else stood out? That the chain doesn't really have an impact on the velocity at all. It doesn't have an impact at all. No, you're right there. Okay, so a lot of people always think, oh, no, but there's a chain. Now this can't be the same question. No, just because there's a chain there 
doesn't change the way in which the gear is linking to one another. It still keeps the same principles. And anything else? So I also learned that we can use gear ratios to our benefit. Yeah, we can. Like on a bicycle, in a car. Like in a car, does it always stay in first gear the whole way around? No, we go and we change in gears. And what that does, it allows us to manipulate between low and high gear ratios. Okay, so we can adjust how much force we need in and how much speed we can get out. Okay, great. So you guys are okay with today's lesson? Will you be able to calculate gear velocity ratio for me? Yes, sir. Okay, great, because you guys can do a couple for homework for me as well. Okay, so I want you guys to quickly use your groups on Google Classroom and draw out your own pair of gears. Anything that you can think of, any type of spur gears, draw them out for me. Remember, with what we've done now for gear velocity ratio, it works with all the different types of gears. Yes, we're focusing a lot on spur gears, but the principle can still be applied to a lot of other things as well. Okay, so what to remember to write down how many teeth the driver gear has and how many teeth the driven gear has. This is important for velocity ratio. Why is it important? So, wouldn't it because of the formula? Yes, what is the formula? VR equals driver over driven. Yes, yeah, so if you don't tell me how many teeth you have on them, will you be able to do it? No, no. Okay, so once you've done that and drawn out your own gears, please calculate the gear velocity ratio of your gears. Okay? You have 10 minutes, 5 to 10 minutes to do this. Then you will share your drawing with the class and tell us how and exactly what is your gear velocity ratio. Great. Well done, guys. That was such an amazing presentation. I'm so glad you guys are able to pick up the concepts quite quickly and so easy. How was it making your own gears? So I kind of enjoyed it. It was quite fun. Okay, great. So what I want you guys to quickly do for me for homework, you can do this at home. It won't take you more than half an hour max. I've got some, I think I've got five different examples on this worksheet. I just want you guys to calculate the gear velocity ratios. So this is gear one, gear two, three, four, and five. Okay, you'll see from gear four and five is a little bit more tricky, but I wanna see how you guys can cope with it. Yes, I haven't gone over it yet, but I wanna see what you guys think you'll do. Okay, thank you so much for the wonderful day, and you guys must have a wonderful night's rest, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, sir, thank you, sir. Bye.